Mexico. Here we are at the desk, the nerve center, if you will. This is where we go before we bowl. And the first thing we do is we ask for a lane, politely, Bob. Then they'll set you up with it. And then you get your bowling shoes. Now, Bob, I know you're probably wondering, why do I get special shoes? Well, the truth is, Bob, that the shoes make the man. In fact, wingtips or a nice pair of loafers with tassels or without really make a difference in a big social or business setting. <coughs> Kidding. What he means, Bob, is when we bowl, we're not looking for traction. We need to slide. It's for proper form when we release the ball, and it's for safety, too. So bowlers wear a special shoe with a leather sole that allows them to slide. If you wore a tennis shoe or a shoe with a rubber sole, it could stop our momentum during our approach, and when we release the ball, we could stick, we could stumble, we could really hurt ourselves. So you might see different bowling shoes out there, but they all have a leather sole. Ah, leather sole. I love that album. Anyway, both centers have all different sizes they can provide to bowlers. So, uh... What's your shoe size, Bob? And don't worry, you can tell me we're friends. Uh, 11 and a half? Come in right up. Here you go. Ah, fuzzy. <laughs> well, now we need a ball. And just like shoes, if you don't have your own, the center provides them for you. They're usually on racks, color-coded by their weight, with the weight engraved right on them. They range from 6 to 16 pounds. And a good rule for kids is to choose a weight equal to their age. And to make absolutely sure that you get a ball that best fits your hand, AMF has what's known as the smart ball system. Smart ball, huh? What's the capital of Uruguay? <laughs> this is a smart ball. It has many different size holes drilled in it. That way we can determine which ball in the bowling center best suits you. Okay. Here, go ahead. Drop your thumb in here. Right. Take your middle two fingers, drop them in here. Those are the two that we use. Great. Okay. Now, your thumb is the main thing that hangs on to the ball, so you don't want it to fit too loose or too tight. All right, how's that feel? Pretty good. Good. Well, then, actually, I think you could use a 14-pounder, and according to the smart ball here, looks like you could use an extra large grip. Oh, that is a pretty smart ball. It's a great system for the beginner bowler. All right, here we go. 14-pounder, self-basting. Wow, thanks a lot. No problem. All right, we've got the shoes, we've got the ball. Now let's talk about the pins. Yep, a couple facts about the pins, Bob, or as we bowlers like to call them, toothpicks of Satan. We don't call them toothpicks of Satan. Anyway, there are ten pins. Each one weighs a little over three pounds. The one closest to you is the one pin, or the head pin. The rest read left to right like a book. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. To knock all the pins down, the best place to hit them is between the one and three pin. And if you're a right-handed bowler, this is what we call the pocket. If you're a left-handed bowler, the pocket is between the one and two pins. Now I'm impressed. Geez, you sure know an awful lot about pins. Now, actually, I had all that written on my hand. Let's talk about the lane. You'll notice the lane is slippery past what we call the foul line. That's because once a day, they apply a thin film of oil on the lane to protect it. Now, you don't want to go across the foul line because, A, you might slip, or, B, you might track some of that protective oil back on the approach area. That part isn't supposed to be slippery, and it's dangerous if it is. And in competition, you don't get credit for the pins you knock down if you go over the line. That's right. So, Bob, are you ready to start bowling? You've got all the basics down now? You betcha. Let's go. 